Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, let's learn about Jinja. Uh, we'll be using Jinja to create uh, macros, right? Uh, so first, uh, getting into the macros. Before getting into the macros, let's learn about basics of Jinja. So what is Jinja? So Jinja is a templating language uh, written in Python programming language. And Jinja is used in dbt to write functional SQL. Uh, so you can just check the documentation uh, if you want to learn more about the Jinja. Uh, but uh, in this video, we'll learn the basics uh, Jinja, like uh, how to create variables, uh, how to create list, dictionaries, and some conditional statements. So to practice Jinja, I'm using uh, JinjaQuantProgramming.com. So even you can just uh, get into this particular website for practicing the Jinja. Okay. So before starting, so um, so there are three Jinja delimiters. Uh, so first delimiter is, so we need to start with curly brackets, uh, percentage, and we have some statements written, and we have percentage and close the bracket, curly bracket. So this is uh, used for statements, okay? So if you are writing any statements, so this has to be returned in this delimiter, fine? So what is the meaning of statement? So this perform any functional programming such as setting a variable or starting for loop. Okay. So this is where you will be writing all your statements. So next delimiter is two curly braces. Okay. So next delimiter, we have two curly braces open and we have some kind of expressions here and two curly braces close. So it is used for expression. Uh, so this will print uh, text to render file. So in most cases in dbt, this will compile your uh, Jinja to pure SQL. Okay, so I can say this is for expressions. Okay, is used for expressions. So next we have, uh, of course, comments. So we'll start with curly brackets and hash, and you have some statements here. I mean, like comments, and let me close this. Okay, so this is uh, used for comments. Okay, so this allows us to document our code in line, right? So this will not be rendered in pure SQL that you create when you run dbt compile or dbt run. So just remember this three delimiters, uh, so which will you, which will be using to uh, create uh, variables or if you want to create some expressions and if you want to write any comments. Okay, so let's start with uh, very basics. So first, let's learn how to create a variable. So let me remove this. So to create a variable, uh, so let me uh, start with uh, a statement, right? So let me create. So uh, I need to give a keyword called set and equals and the variable name. So let me set give a variable name uh, like, uh, okay, let me give variable name, right? So set x equals to 34. And let me close this and curly bracket right so I'm just creating a variable called x okay so I need to give a keyword called set so I'm just giving a value 34 in this right so if I uh, just render this right now I'll not get any uh, output because I'm not accessing that x right to access that x of course we need to give this expression so x I'm calling the x and render you can see I'm getting this 34 Right. Similarly, let me create one more variable. Uh, I'll just create a variable called y. So let me open this percentage and set y uh, equals to, uh, I'll just write hello. So this is a string. So I'm just writing in double quotes, hello. And let me close this percentage and curly bracket. So of course, if I want to print it, so I'll open two curly brackets, y and close two curly brackets. Fine. You can see I'm getting hello here, right? So this is how it's very simple, right? To create a variables. So now let's see how we can create a, a list, right? So let me create a list. So what is a list? List is one of the data structures that are ordered and indexed by integers, right? So if you have worked with Python programming, then uh, it's similar to that. Okay. So the list is just a collection of items. So let me create a simple list. So I'll give set and I'll give uh, something called uh, self self i'm creating a list name called self and so let me create a list to create a list we give this uh, square brackets and we have different elements like i can give me uh like myself uh, this all uh, is a string right so i'm giving in quotes even you can add some numbers like 34 
or 56 anything's fine so let me complete this list and percentage and close fine so now if i want to access that list so we need to give um, two curly braces right so why we use two curly braces for the expressions right and give the name of a list called self s e l f self and let me close this yes can you see i'm able to access all the elements of my list so assume like i want to just take a first uh element first value okay and as i told so list are the data structures that are ordered and indexed by integers so index position for this may is zero and this is one and this is two and this is three right so if i want to access this me so i'll mean to give the index position that is uh, zero so with the square brackets you can see i'm able to access that me so if i just change that to index position one so i'm getting myself index position two yes you can see i'm able to access that okay so similarly we have many other functions like if you want to find the length of this okay so we need to give a uh, pipe symbol and alien uh length let me check its length yes okay so uh so we have a property called length you can see the length of my list is four so this way we have many such properties uh you can just check the documentation for that okay uh so we have complete documentation so if i go to introduction and search for list and uh, yes you can see we have list of built-in filters so we have so many functions okay so so that i can just apply on the filters okay so this is how we can just use uh, the functions as well as the uh, other properties associated with that data structure fine uh, so of course this is this video is not to tease the list and uh, jinja uh, yes so whatever it's required for you to get it good to get started with the dvt i'm just covering all those things fine so this is all about the list okay so now let's create uh, a dictionary okay so to create a dictionary so what is dictionary D dictionary is also one of the data structure which is composed of key value pairs right so let me create a dictionary uh, so to create a dictionary a curly bracket a percentage and i need to give a name so let me give a name called person and so open the curly bracket so we have a key value pair right so this is my key called name and you can see we have a colon and i need to give a value like i'll give me fine so to add a next key value pair let give the comma and the next uh, key is number and the value for that is three fine so let me close this and percentage and curly bracket okay so i've created a simple dictionary here with the key value and the name of my dictionary is person so if i want to just print the dictionary so two curly brackets and let me give the name of my dictionary you can see i'm able to get uh, both keys and values so if you want to access uh, a value uh, that is me so we need to give the key in this manner so that is dot name so i'm able to get that okay so if i just give here a dot number yes you can say i'm getting a value for that so this is one of the way or else you can just give the brackets itself like bracket and give the uh, key value and close the bracket so i'm able to get it okay so if you want to pass another key like name and i'm getting a value for that okay so this is how we can create uh, dictionaries so the next uh, let's explore about the if else conditions okay so uh, if you have worked with programming language which is similar to that right so if else statements are control statements that make it possible to provide instruction for a computer to make decisions and based on certain criteria right so you'll be getting some you'll be adding some criteria if that condition is true then it will be uh, uh, get into that if block and execute certain part of code right so let me uh, do that so let's create uh, one simple uh, variable called uh, set temperature uh, M P E R A T or a set temperature and so let me set the temperature to 80 and let me close this that is percentage and close it and so let me give some uh, uh, statement here so on a day like this on a day like this I especially especially like okay so the next line will be my if statement uh, so 
it will start with this a delimiter right so if temperature uh, so if temperature this is my uh, variable name if my temperature is greater than 70 if this is greater than 70 so open the condition okay so if this is true then it enters the if block okay so i'll just print refreshing refreshing uh, mango sorbet fine else so let me add else block else so just i'll take a decent a chocolate ice cream fine and so if I start the if block so it's good uh, so we need to even close it so this how we close it so and if so and if and percentage and close it fine uh, so here so this is my uh, variable right uh, setting the temperature to 80 so then I'm printing on a day like this, I especially like. So now we have a if block here, right? So we have if block starting and ending if, and between this, we have some statements and uh, else, right? So this statement will execute if this condition is true, right? So if temperatures, right now the temperature is 80, so it's 80 greater than 70. Uh, 80 is of course greater than 70, so it will enter this block, a refreshing mango sorbet, that's what it's printing. So I'm not getting this else part, right? So let me change this to 10, okay? So and render this once again you can see i'm getting a decent chocolate ice cream why because it will check the condition if 10 is greater than 70 no so it will come to else block and will execute the else uh, condition okay so this is how we use uh, if else conditions fine so now let's uh, do the practice for uh, for loop so this way you can just create uh, different examples and just practice it okay how the if condition works in jinja so next uh, let's uh, do the uh, looping uh, so for loops even why we use for loops if uh, uh, so we if we have something uh, a code which need to be repeated at certain times right uh, so then we can use this for loops and uh, so uh, uh, for example if you have a list and if I want to loop over the uh, list uh, so then I can even use the for loop for that right so let's do one example for that uh, so let me open this curly bracket uh, percentage so let me create a variable called flavors uh, flavors and so this is my list so we have a chocolate uh, so we have a chocolate so then we have a uh, vanilla and uh, we have a uh, strawberry strawberry okay let me close the list and bracket and close it fine so if I want to print it, so we know how to print this list, right? So that is flavors. Okay, so this is my flavors, uh, but I want to loop over this, okay? So we have a for loop, so it's similar to the Python. So for, uh, so we need to start with uh, the delimiter, right? So for flavor in flavors, for flavors in flavors, uh, so today I want to I want so I'll be accessing that flavor variable there is a temporary variable which is coming from my for loop of uh, flavor and I'll just write ice cream ice cream and now let's end the for loop close it and end for so now it has to loop over the entire list so as soon as i close it yes so this is my variable called flavors right so now for it's similar to the python like for i in some list then execute this that many times right and so in jinja so for flavor in flavors so flavor is my temporary variable okay so now right now the flavor is pointing to this chocolate right so for chocolate in flavors, then today I want chocolate ice cream. Okay, that's what it's printing. So now it will move on to the next uh, loop, right? Next iteration. Now the flavor is pointing to the vanilla. So for vanilla in flavors, today I want vanilla ice cream. That's what it's printing, right? 
so next uh, so now the variable has pointing to the strawberry so for strawberry in flavors today i want a strawberry ice cream fine so this is uh, all about for loop uh, so um, yes uh, in today's session we have just get started with what is jinja and we have created some variables a list dictionaries and uh, like if conditions and for loop okay so in upcoming session let's see like how we can just implement this jinja in macros and how we can use this jinja in the sql okay so see you in the next video